Hello friends, welcome to Minute JavaScript, where I talk about topics quickly and concisely. Today we'll be covering inverting an if statement and early returns. And first I'd like to thank the new subscribers to the channel, Fredek Sunimo, Ronan Oliver, Arabu, Jonathan, Svavar, Kenneth, Mauricio, Sri Harash, Tristan, Khalid, Nerdout, and Alan. It's your support that keeps this channel going, so I'd like to thank each and every one of you. I really appreciate it. So now with inverting an if, what you want to do is put the invalid statements up at the top. So you can see the code within here is, is kind of our happy path, whereas this is um, our invalid cases. Uh, so with inverting an if, what you want to do is just flip the condition of the if statement and then move everything within this block to replace everything within here. So I'll just swap the null up here and then have the x down below. Now because we've checked to make sure that if the value is null, uh, we're gonna go ahead and exit. So if we've gotten to this point, we know for sure that our value is not null. So what I can do is I can actually just erase this else statement and have return x. Uh, now this is looking more like a traditional guard statement. It's ensuring that the value is not null. So if we've gotten here, I can be sure that the value is not null because we've already exited up here if it is. And one thing you can do is just shorten this to look something like that. Now this is looking like a standard guard cause format. I can see if it's null, we're gonna exit. So this code becomes a lot easier to read because of that. It's a lot shorter and there's a lot less indenting. So with this example, of course, it may not demonstrate the full value of it because it's such a simple example and either the before or after are very easy to read. The benefit of this is when you have multiple nested if statements, especially with an else clause attached to them. So if you have three or four if statements with else clauses, it's starting to look a lot more like indented code where you're having like three or four indents deep to get to your codes while you also have the trailing else statements down below. So now I'm gonna take an example that will show that a little bit more clearly um, from refactoring.com. You can search for replacing nested conditionals with guard clauses. But this is an example of what it's gonna look like. So if we were to have multiple if statements with else's attached, you can see that it becomes a little bit difficult to read. It's harder to follow the flow of the code through here as in addition to these kind of dangling else's that just are kind of throughout the code at the bottom of each if. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy this guy from here and show you how to refactor that. So let's paste this guy into here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna surround all of these, all of these ifs in, in brackets, just to make it a little bit more standard. This is kind of how I write the code, always using the brackets for the ifs. So we can see here for me, this is a little bit difficult for me to determine what's going on here, especially when we get to these uh, nested ifs down here. Just gonna go ahead and make sure that all the else clauses are in brackets. And let's see, to make this consistent with the after code that we're gonna be looking at, I'm gonna get rid of this result and I'm going to return all of these things. So I'm just gonna, return everything here, and then we don't need this. Okay, and so again, on line three, um, because we have return followed by an else, uh, that means this else is uh, redundant. We can go ahead and get rid of that. So I'm gonna get rid of those two lines, and I've already reduced the indentation by one. And I can shorten this if is dead, just like that. So now we're looking at a uh, similar situation that has a return also followed by an else. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kill this else also. I'm gonna shorten this, move it up to the top. And again, we're looking at the same thing. I have a return followed by an else, uh, which makes the else redundant here. So if I bring this back, you can see here the, um, the before and the after is is drastically different while well, the logic remains the same this is much easier to read so you can see in the get pay amount function if it's dead it does this if it's separated it does this if it's retired it does this um, otherwise it just returns the normal pay now here i'm going to take another example from JetBrains. this is an example on inverting an if so what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy this code here and because this is not copied from javascript i'm just going to uh, make it a little javascripty and you can see here with our if statements, um, it gets a little bit nesty. So because of that, what I wanna do is invert these ifs, but there's no else. But with this function, if I were to else and return here, uh, JavaScript, 
it's actually the same as returning undefined. So that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to just going to add the undefined. Um, and this, this is just for um, a little bit of clarity, just so you can see how this is happening. So the code before and this code with the return undefines is functionally equivalent. So what I would do here again is, is because the happy path is up at the top, the happy path is um, three through seven, while as um, nine is the, the outside case when, when P is null. So what I want to do is I want to flip the case. So instead of checking for P uh, is not equal null, I'm going to check to see if it is null. And I'm going to move all of this code in here and I'm going to move the return up at the top. Now again, because I have a return followed by an else, um, I'm just going to get rid of the else. I'm going to shorten the code up here to just be a one-liner. And so again here, because I'm looking at the happy path on line 5 and the, and the fallback case down below, I want to invert these again. So I'm just going to flip the conditional here and move, the, move everything from within the if block to the else block. So now that, again, I have my return followed by my else, I can just kill this and shorten this into a single one-liner. Um, now I have my uh, guard clauses up at the top as well as the actual work of the function down below. And this is much easier to read. You can see that we've actually removed all of the indentation from the code. These are pretty easily identifiable as guard clauses and all they do is just return. Um, this, of course, is redundant. Um, you don't have to return undefined, you can just say return. And so that's what an early return and inverting the if is. Two techniques I like to use a lot in my code. It tends to improve uh, the readability of my functions as well as reducing the number of lines and the complexity. I'd recommend you take a couple of these examples. I'll provide a link to the source in the comments below and take some time and practice inverting those yourself. I'd like to thank you for taking your time watching this video with me. Of course, if you liked it and you want to see more videos like this, uh, be sure to like and subscribe. I really do appreciate it. You help keep small channels like this alive. And thanks, and I will see you in the next video.